Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are talking spring bass fishing. We're talking about where these bass go during the pre-spawn and the spawn, and more importantly, how to catch them. We're covering ponds, rivers, reservoirs, and giant natural lakes like this one. Let's start with where these fish go, and then we'll talk about the baits and the methods that you can use to consistently catch them. We're going to break this down by the type of reservoir. We'll talk about natural lakes, rivers, highland and lowland reservoirs, because they're different, but those four categories will cover everything in the entire country. If you're a pond guy, pay attention to the other categories and figure out which one best describes your pond. Although you're fishing on a smaller scale, the actual bass behavior is the exact same. Let's start with rivers. Now we have already talked early spring. Little over a month ago, we shot a video very similar to this about where these fish were going and how they were starting to move to get you guys started because the guys in the south are ahead of schedule and we didn't want you to get the information too late. Now we're talking true spring, pre-spawn all the way up through the spawn before these fish start to make their summer transitions. We're going to cover all that in between information so that you're prepared this year. All right, so river guys first. Your fish, goal number one is to eat, goal number two is to spawn. This is very simple. The bass are going to want to get out of the current. So if you have backwaters, man made or natural, if you have little tiny creeks that run in, that will work great. If you have canals that have been dug in for marinas, things of that nature, that will work great. But the fish are trying to get out of the current. Now, earlier in the pre-spawn, we tend to have a lot more storms rolling through. Like what we've got here today, spring is unstable. Yesterday, it was 75 degrees right here. Right now, 43 degrees. That's springtime. I can see rain on the horizon behind us right now, even though it was gorgeous yesterday. So the conditions are up and down. That's the challenge in spring. The good news is that all of these bass are bulking up. They're feeding, they're aggressive. They want to be fat going into the spawn. They want to eat good. So you've got that going for you. So again, your fish want to get out of the current, but as storms roll in, those little creeks, those little backwaters, they'll blow out. They'll get big flows of mud through them. Well, if that is happening, the bass will actually pull to them to feed. It actually speeds up the process. In the drier years, the fish move a little bit slower. Now, if you struggle with fishing muddy water, here's a tip for you. The canals, the man-made canals instead of the creeks, they don't blow out as often. It, it would have to blow out the entire river system and backflow the canal for that water to get muddy. So that water is more stable, it's cleaner, it's clearer, and it's got typically slightly warmer conditions during the storm. So if you're not a muddy water guy, that's the place to look, the man-made canals if you've got them. If you don't mind the mud, the little creek tributaries off the main river, that should be your focus. Once these fish are done bulking up and feeding, they're going to stay in those exact same locations to spawn. Now, in those locations, depending on how large they are, what you are looking for is pinch points. In a small creek, that could just be the mouth of the creek. In a large creek, it could be everywhere that a little finger runs off of the creek, but they're focused on the pinch points, the spots where it gets the narrowest, because that's where the most food has to pass through a single location. So that's where you will find your biggest fish. All right, now let's switch over. Let's talk reservoirs and then we'll end with natural lakes. Reservoir guys, highland and lowland reservoirs are very different in this situation. Now, the ultimate goal of the bass is the same. The bass's goal is to bulk up, to feed up and to move to spawning grounds. That's what they're doing in every one of these locations. But in your situation, it can look a little differently. Let's start Highland. 
what is a highland reservoir? Typically, you've got a narrower dam. We've covered this before. A narrower dam, longer fingers that run out going up the different arms, steeper canyon walls, and a lot of little fingers and little points coming off of them. Tons and tons of little secondary points. That will clue you in that you're on a highland reservoir. Also, that narrower dam would tell you that you have much deeper water in the actual channel of the reservoir. That's another clue that you're on a highland. So these bass, they are headed up the arms because the only shallow water that they're going to find, consistent shallow water for an actual spawning flat, will be in the backs of those fingers. They'll go all the way up a finger when they get to the very back. There's typically a creek back there that's been dumping in mud and it'll create a flat area. That's where those fish are going to spawn. So your fish are very consistent, very stable, and very predictable. They are following secondary points into the backs of those large arms. What is a secondary point? We covered this in the last one. Out on the main body, those big giant points that define the lake, that cut two big arms, that is a main lake point. The little points on the edges of it, headed back up the arms, those are secondary points. So the bass are going to jump between secondary points. Now what happens next depends on water flow. If you have a dry year, the bass will take much longer to get to the back. That is because the, the food, the bait, also takes longer to get to the back. So the food is moving slower, so the bass move slower. They still use the secondaries, but they will sit on a location longer. So you're looking for the secondary points that have the best structure. If you have secondary points for half a mile or a mile or five miles, and most of them come out slowly and fall off, come out slowly and fall off, then you've got one that comes out farther than all the others, or you have one that has a tree on it or has rocks laying on it, one that is different, that's where your fish will be. Now the fish will jump point to point to point moving up the arm, but the biggest fish, the best fish, will stay on those prime locations the longest. Now, as you get these weather changes, that will typically cause the fish to hunker down. That's why the giant fish, the biggest ones, like those with the best cover on them, because it takes an incredible amount of terrible weather for the fish to actually go backwards in the spring. They will almost never backtrack. If the weather turns foul, they just hunker in place. So that's why those bigger fish are on those best spots. So knowing that they don't go backwards, look for the spots with key structures on them. But if you are having a wet spring, a spring where you're getting a lot of runoff and the lake is coming up faster than normal, you're getting good rising water, even if it's chocolate milk water, just true brown mud water, the bait fish will go to that rising water. They love to move up because it's typically warmer than the main lake. Also, there's an incredible amount of food dumping in with that rising water. So the bass will beeline for it. They'll skip across those points much faster than normal and end up in the backs of those pockets way ahead of schedule. So if you've got that rising water condition, you wanna start your search in the very back and then backtrack out from there until you run into them. And if it's rising muddy water, don't be afraid to go shallow. And I mean shallow, dirt shallow, as that water is coming up. They can be in an inch or two or three or five right on the bank, eating whatever's coming in as that water is going up. As it stabilizes, they'll back off. They'll set up in five or 10 feet of water. But again, on likely structures, likely cover near those areas, and they are going to stay there all the way until they spawn in that location, and then it starts running in reverse. Lowland reservoir, guys, your turn. Lowland reservoirs are very interesting because there are all sorts of variables. So lowland reservoirs will often have more than one dam that's a sure sign that you're on a lowland. It's flat enough ground that when they started to dam it, the water would have overrun somewhere else. So they had to put up another or two or three or five dams to actually contain the water in the lake. 
but it's not necessarily multiple dams. You can still have a lowland reservoir with just one dam, but it's on a much flatter area. So you tend to have a lot of island tops, a lot of long tapering points that run. And although there may be big giant arms, they tend to be shallower. They tend to have a lot more cover humps, points, long points in there. And you also tend to get these winding creek channels that go up the arms. So oftentimes in a highland, you'll get this long creek arm, but it's really deep water and it's fairly straight other than major contours. In a lowland reservoir, you get a lot of these creek channels that are doing this thing, going up an arm. So those fish, overall, same behavior. Secondary points, making their way back to spawning flats. The difference is that there are so many more likely places for a bass to sit in a lowland reservoir than a highland. There are way more spawning flats to start with, tons of them, because so much of the lake is slower tapered. There's a lot of shallow areas. So where do you start your search? Wet year, water running in, same deal. Fish are going to the back. They're going to the source of the running water. If you've got multiple creeks, they will split up. They'll set up in those areas. And then once it stabilizes, they'll spread out on those flats. Those fish will be there and then they'll ultimately spawn there. And again, those flats tend to be a lot larger at the mouths of those creeks. So your fish, once that water stops flowing, will really spread out on those flats. In a dry year, again, it takes them longer to get there. Now a tip for you guys, focus, yes, on secondary points, same deal, point hopping your way back up those arms, but also focus on the offshore structure. The biggest fish, especially if you have a lot of water pressure, if you're a southern guy where there's tons of boats, lots of guys putting pressure there. I said water pressure, I meant fishing pressure. But if you've got a lot of boats on the water, those fish will hesitate to be right up on the bank getting run over by boats. So they will often hop the offshore structures. They'll go from hump to creek bend, back to a hump, to the end of a point, working their way into a bay. You also, in a reservoir like this, tend to have pretty good flow on the main river. Not everywhere, but a lot of lowland reservoirs are on big river systems. So you guys, you've got big current out there on the main river. Again, treat it like a river. Those fish are gonna get out of the current before they spawn. They're going to get away from that stuff. They are going up the arms. If yours is not one of those, if it's just a shallower water reservoir, lots more dams, but not a lot of flow, ignore that piece of advice. Just assume they're doing the same thing, headed back up those arms. Now, because you have so many places for these fish to go, what do you do? So we just talked hopping those offshore structures, but more importantly, I want you to look for one key thing on all of those structures. And that again is pinch points, areas that narrow. So if you have a giant, giant bay and it's all a big flat, but it's got some islands in it, you want that spot that's got a little bit of a saddle that bait fish are going to move through. They're going to sit right there and ambush them. If you've got one of those Southern reservoirs where it's got a big river and then you've got those fingers that come off, right where that finger goes to leave will be narrow and then it opens up into your spawning bay they'll be right there at the narrow point sitting on the secondary points that make it narrow they will be right there it could be anything else it could be the mouth of a marina it could and even in these places you will have man-made structures people will come in and cut canals from marinas or anything else anywhere that they have cut back where you get a narrowing that's a prime spot. Anywhere that two secondary points are across the arm from each other, coming out into the water, now underwater, but the actual deep water is thinner than it would be in the rest of the arm, pinch point, fish both sides of that. Does that make sense? It's really simple. Because you have so much water, you want to choose the places that narrow that water down. That brings us 
to natural lakes. Natural lakes, the advice is almost the same, except that your fish will be coming up primary points into large spawning flats. Now, the size depends on the size of the lake, but typically a natural lake will be very slow tapering on the edges out to deep water in the middle. That's typically what you've got. So those fish tend to winter in the middle, then work their way to the shores for the spring. They're headed up there to spawn in the bays. So what they will most often do is come up in waves out of that deeper open water and they'll move up onto the large points that reach out into the lake. But they don't actually come up and sit on the point. They just use it as a contour line. They get up right along the edge of it. They find a comfortable water depth and they follow it around the edge of the point and into the spawning bays between the points. So your entire focus is on those spawning bays. That is where your fish will end up. They'll do it by following contour changes to get there. If you've got edges of points, if you've got natural ledges in the lake where it goes out to a certain depth and then it breaks off, they will follow that depth line until temperature tells them it's okay to jump up and go shallower. Now, if you've got storms, if you've got running water coming in, they will jump up sooner to feed. But because it typically is so flat for so far, when that storm ends, that running water stops coming in, they're going to go right back out and set up on the tops of those ledges where they know they have a comfortable place to get to. Now, as it warms up, it gets more stable. We're headed towards the spawn, still pre-spawn, still feeding, but towards the spawn. Your fish, if there is anything man-made, they're headed there, mouths of marinas, mouths of canals, any little creek channel that might be coming in, those fish will be bunching up in those areas and that's where you wanna focus. Again, pinch points, just like we said in the last couple. Pinch points are critical. The nice thing about a natural lake is there is so little change in the lake. So much of the contour is the same that when you find one of those little areas, whether it be a high spot, whether it be a narrowing spot, whether it be a pinch point, whether it's the mouth of a marina, it does not matter. If you find one of those likely locations, because it is the only thing around, the fish will pile in and pile in and pile in, and you can get on the most incredible schools of fish that you have ever seen, where double hookups with you and your friends are just constant. That can happen. Natural lakes are a great place for that to happen. Now on the negative side of that, because those fish are grouping up, if you're on anything else around, there are no fish. They funnel into these tight little areas. So be prepared. If you're out there catching nothing over and over and over again, keep moving. Don't just keep doing the same thing. It's not random. You are literally fishing areas that may not have fish because they have congregated somewhere nearby. So continue to move until you find the fish and then trust every bite. When you get a bite, trust that that fish is not alone and continue to fish that location until you get another bite. If you get two bites, try to get three. If you get three, try to get 10. And then when it goes flat, start your search again but don't forget where you got those bites come back to that either later in the day or a different day and see if that school of fish is continuing to grow because they were there for a reason now pond guys any of these things could apply to you it's just on a smaller scale it depends if your pond is natural shallow bowl everything i just said would apply if you've got a dam is it a dam on a steep walled pond? Do you have really steep edges? Or is it slow tapering with a big flat at the other end? Well, you would either listen to the advice for a highland or a lowland reservoir. It just depends on the style of pond it is. But all of the information applies just on a smaller scale. Your fish will probably bunch up in one or two or three likely places on that pond. There won't be 10 different schools of fish. If there's a little funnel, if there's a creek inlet, they will be there. 
it's actually much simpler on a pond because you have less features. It can be frustrating when the bite's not on, when the fish are just sort of lethargic and sitting there because you know you've run out of places, you know where the fish are, you just have to wait them out. Now, as far as baits go, we've done a top five baits for early spring already. It's all reaction baits. Well, for actual spring, for pre-spawn into spring, that remains the same. The only thing I would do is add in top water. So as you're running these places, your goal is to get bit. I mean, that's always our goal when we fish, obviously, but you want it for two reasons. One, to catch fish, just like normal. Two, it's information gathering. Getting bites tells you what the fish are doing. So as you're running these spots, your goal is to get bites, to get them quickly. Even if you don't get the fish, at least you know there's fish on a likely location and you can build a pattern. Because again, everything I'm telling you is repeatable. The larger the body of water, the more places that it will be working. If you find them on secondary points and they're on the third point up an arm, go to the next arm, see if they're on the third point. Go to the next arm. If you're on a natural lake and you find them on a contour line on the end of a main lake point, go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. If you're on a river and you find them feeding where a little finger goes off, again, I don't have to tell you, try to repeat that until you've built sustainable patterns. The best way to do that is with reaction baits. Bigger baits will pull fish up. So if you've got clearer water, a bait like a glide bait, well, even if you have muddy water, it'll catch them. But if you have clear water, even if they're not biting and they're just rising up to look at it, you'll see them and that is critical information. So a glide bait is an amazing way to get these fish. Fast fishing is key, getting those reaction strikes. Spinner bait, chatter bait, jerk bait, lipless crank. So many different ways. A square bill is a major player for me in some of the bodies of water. Uh, natural lakes and in rivers, a square bill is a major player for me. I could go on and on, but we'll keep this simple. The important thing is that you are moving quickly, you are covering water, and you are building patterns. And then once you catch fish in a location, don't forget the location. Look at why they were there and try to repeat it. And then if it doesn't work, come back because those fish will continue to be in that same location. Now down in the video description, I mumbled off all these different patterns that I would do. Down in the video description, I'll link you my five favorite baits and not just, hey, a glide bait. I'll tell you my exact glide bait and exact color. Uh, speaking nationally, my favorite bait that if we were going back on the road this spring, like we did last spring, literally the exact bait that I would tie on first. And I'll give you my top five of those for spring. So you're out there covering water. These are the things that I would be throwing if I came just to try your lake. Now, as you try them, if you find something working better than others, go that direction. If you find they're on a jerk bait, try some different jerk baits. But the, these will be the baits that I would choose as my starting point. Hopefully that helps you guys. Springtime truly is your best shot at a giant bass. Pre-spawn, those fish are bulking up. Then spawn, they move up onto the beds. You can also target them there. They'll be in the same locations. They moved into those areas for that spawning. Now, one more piece of advice for you guys that made it all the way to the end of this video. Here it is. Actually, I'll give you two. The first areas that are going to turn on in your lake are typically on the northern side of the lake. Those are going to warm up first. That one was easy. Now, for you guys that do have a lot of running water coming into your lake, one place that almost everybody overlooks is near the dam. It's the farthest away from the running water. So it's the farthest away from what everybody says should be going on. This is just a tip, take it or leave it. If you go down towards the dam on a reservoir, then come up river until you get to the very first spawning bay, the first arm that runs back, and it does not have to be a big one, just the first one that's different from that steeper canyon. The very first place that they could go in to spawn, that is gonna have some big fish on it, and it is almost always overlooked in every reservoir across the country. People go to the running water, which they should, 
But for the fish at the dam, in that deep water, that little finger that cuts back that has a little bit of spawning ground back there in the back, and it's got a little creek coming into it that no one would ever think about, that's the only running water that they have. And they will group up there. So if you want to try something different this year, you want to get away from the crowd, try fishing farther down the lake in that first little cutback, and you may be surprised what happens. Guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Tim and I are dedicated to helping you become better anglers. We want to see you succeed. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, hit that little bell symbol so you know when new videos are coming. We shoot the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but we do a lot of bonus content too. You won't know about it if you don't turn on those notifications. Thanks guys, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.